Hey everybody, uh, I gotta tell you, super excited. Uh, once a year, I get this fun opportunity uh, to be able to come to Ames, Iowa for the Iowa games and play soccer yes. with some of my former uh, <laughs> students that I got to coach. This right. is one of them, now you're a coach. Yeah. So this is a good friend of mine, Josh Perkins. Guess. We go way back. Uh, great man of God it was fun even while coaching him got to be talk about God a lot and stuff it was it was a lot of fun times and now still is and once a year especially sometimes more than that but That's we get goal, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get to connect like that but um, I wanted to pull him on into this video we're in our no matter what series going through first Peter we're at the end of it first Peter chapter 5 the last part of chapter 5 you just heard Carrie speak about this uh, yesterday or this last weekend and um, I just want us to focus though on one verse of that. First Peter chapter five, verse seven. Will you read that for us, Josh? Uh, let's see here. Casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. So since so many of these videos and devos, um, it's really been, you know, Peter's been on point. And he's been talking about, you know, we need to do this, we need to strive to do this, we need to strive to do this and do this and do this. And so at the end of the series, you could be at a point where you feel almost a little beat up. Like, okay, what else do I have to do? Okay, what else do I have to do? How hard, how much harder do I have to work? And it's really awesome. There's this one verse at the end, like in the wrapped up in this end of this, where it's like, stop worrying about it all. Stop, stop worrying about it all. Cast all your anxieties, all your worries on God because because what? Because he cares for you. Because he cares for you. It's just a it's just a great place. So I have one question for you. What anxieties, what worries do you need to hand over to God? In a word, everything. I, <laughs> no, I, I know that sounds yeah. bad, but that that's and that's impossible for that's we're humans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and we struggle. I I, I, you, I get caught up in work, I get caught up in every other thing in the world. But at the end of the day, that's what's so great about the gift of salvation. And it, yeah. it, it, no, it, it just, the, the most mind-numbing thing is that everything that we think is super important is trivial. And, and, and when you can cast all that weight onto something greater than yourself, when you cast it upon Jesus and our Heavenly Father, it, it just is, it's freeing. It's, yeah. it's a weight that, when you take the weight off you, it's impossible to understand how you did it before. So how you tried to go through it for it. Yeah, I completely agree. So do you have a story that yeah, kind of um, from your life? Like we talked about before, there's several things you could you could do. Anyone who's who's alive at all has <laughs> all, multiple. But something really close to me and most, you know, kind of recently is we, uh, my mom passed away not too long ago. Uh, yeah. it's, it's almost coming up on the year mark now. And she died of a very aggressive cancer. In fact, the cancer took her from us before we really knew anything was wrong. Six weeks later, we're, we're having mm -hmm. funeral arrangements. And that's tough on a whole family. Mm -hmm. And her cancer targeted her liver and a lot of other places. But when it targeted her liver, she was over at Omaha at the Buffett Center. And it caused toxins to not be in balance. And it caused her to be loopy for worse word. She, she wasn't really able to grasp her thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so we would stay over there. We didn't want to leave her just alone. So I'm sure I, this is hard on you guys. The whole yeah. family. And I took the first night. It was one of those deals where she got rushed over to Omaha. And I was there alone the first night. Okay. And I, I, I'm, I'm worrying about how I'm getting out of work. I'm worrying about what's going on with mom. I'm also worrying about the normal things. Like, why? The why? Why? What is God's plan here? What? What good is coming out of this? Mm -hmm. And so I'm sitting here just out beside myself and my mom is not able to really communicate. And then I just, you know, I, I took a walk and uh, there's a coffee machine was down the hall. I yep. went out and I got a cup of coffee and I came back and on my way back I passed a room where there was a little girl suffering of, of cancer. And I came back in the room. My mom looks at me and she says, Josh, we need to pray for that little girl down the hallway. Mm. And I said, what? She said, we need to pray for that little girl down the hallway because it's not her time. Mm. And so we prayed. And um, mom prayed for <laughs> us to cast all our cares upon him. And... Two days later, that little girl was released. Wow. Um, 
my mother in everything going on and not able to get a thought she could have been saying why me she could have been saying what what you know what's your plan no her only worry was to make sure we prayed for that little girl and that we cast our worries upon him and it might sound strange but after that night everything even though it, things were continually going downhill it was much better for me that I was able to let go wow. so that's the power of being able to have God in your life it'll never be an easy situation no. and, but and, but and, it's just the the type of courage you see because that's not my that's not my mom being that great that was God through my mom mm. that was that was God empowering mom to do something that she was not capable of doing and that's just like I said, I have millions of examples, but that's one that I'll always remember because it does hit right here yeah. where we're at. Thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you all for joining on in. Oh, we'll catch you later. Bye.